Hello and welcome to another Glenys Garnet Creative Images video. We're going to talk about brushes today. I'm going to look at creating your own brushes from some of your images. In this case, um, an image of some birds in flight and some grasses. I'm going to use two slightly different methods to cut those images out um, so that um, you can see the difference in, in the types of images uh, that we've got. Um, Bear in mind that there's a lot of different ways to do the same thing in, in Photoshop and not every method works for every single image. So you just got to bear that in mind and find find different ways of doing things um, that suit you. Um, the first thing we're going to do is um, what I suggest you do. We, we've used a little uh, toolbar here down the side. I've got my brushes tool on the side here rather than going clicking on brushes and choosing the brush off the drop down list here. I find it easy to actually have my brushes tool pinned to the bar sidebar here. And we just go to window and choose brushes and you'll see it will open up the brushes uh, palette and you can then just drag it onto your toolbar here. And if you look in my brushes, I've got some preset brushes that I've already created. And if we have a look at these brushes, you'll see that I've got uh, crows. If we drag that onto there, we've got crows. We've got uh, geese flying and things like that. Um, now, the first thing I suggest you do if you're going to create some brushes is go to the bottom of your toolbar and create a new folder, create a new group, fold, a new group, sorry, um, and we'll call that my brushes. Okay. And um, what will happen is when we create a brush, it will go to the bottom of this list and we can then drag it into uh, our brushes folder so it clusters them all together and they're not they're not sort of stuck down here at the bottom um, so we'll use this folder when we uh, we come to create the brush now I've got this this file here which is just a, a, an example to use for you I've just got a, an image that I've uh, I've brought in uh, that I've used before I've created some random textures on top of that I've created a pass-through mask just to bring some detail through from below. And I've, I've also just got an empty layer at the top here uh, where we can we can overlay some brushes. Um, what you might find when you're creating some of your composites is that um, you, you might hope, open a, an, an, an image that's got, say, birds in. And I think what a lot of people tend to do is just drag the image in. If we just drag that across into the image. Let's get rid of that. Um, and then we have to find a way of blending that into the background. Now, we can go down the blend layers, layer modes, and see if we can find a way to do that. And often, I think you might find yourself choosing something like pin light might actually do that. But you're not really, you're not really in control of that because you don't know how that's going to look. So... My suggestion is to, with something like this, is always to sort of create a small brush for yourself. We could have dragged it into this layer below here and used a different um, layer blend. But what tends to happen is if you keep it in the layer, sorry, I'm a, I'm a layer too low there. If we keep it in the layer below is, we we often get... The effect of the textures over it can, op can often take out some of the depth. And so you don't get that nice sort of sharpness that you want. maybe, And that's fine if you perhaps want to use that for it to look in the distance. So you want, some, you want them to, to be in the distance and so quite a little bit more vague. But, you, you know, you do, you do lose some control doing that. So we're going to delete that layer and we're going to go back now and we're going to do the cutout layer. So that image is now prepared, ready to do some work. So we're just going to come into this image. Let's just go in a little bit more. Now, what we need to do to create a brush is we need to make this background transparent. Now, if you've never cut an image out before, it can be quite difficult. Um, but because we've got quite a nice contrast image, we've got white and we've got the black crows, we can actually, do, there's a really, really quick way we can do this. And this is really ideal for doing these sort of cutouts. Obviously, we don't want to cut out every single crow. It would take us forever. Um, so what we're going to do, first of all, is because we want to get a nice contrasty background to make the, the cutout a little bit easier, 
uh, we're going to go to image and adjustments and we're going to use the levels to bring the, the whiteness of the background up and just keep bringing it up until you get a nice white background. And we don't want to go too far because if you see that's what's happening is pulling detail back in because that was the sky. So we want to leave the detail out of the sky. We don't want any detail in the sky at all. And we're going to click OK on that. That's OK. Now we're going to go take the magic eraser tool, which is on your eraser bar here. And if we click on the magic eraser tool and you'll see that magically we've deleted the background. And if we scroll in here, we can see we've actually got quite a good a good cut out there. Now, what I would then suggest you do is just go and get your normal eraser and just delete any maybe um, birds that you think maybe don't fit in. And bear in mind with this, you're using it, you, you're being it's a destructive layer. We're not using a, a mask or anything. So if you if you just get something wrong on here, you might have to just go back and do it again. But it, it's a fairly quick and easy method. So I'm quite happy with that. And so I'm just going to cut that down, crop it down a little bit more, crop it down to there. Just bring the that up there, that down there. So crop as much as possible. Click crop and. Now, all we have to do is create the brush. And to do that, we go Edit, Define Brush Set. And in this case, I'm going to call it Crows 1. OK. And you'll see here what it's done is it's dropped the, the brush here. And if I just drag that up into my brushes folder, I've now got that inside my little brushes folder. So if we now go to the... Um, to the image we've got the brush we've got the brush selected here we've selected the crows and if we now just go once tap once with the mouse sorry i'm tapping on the wrong layer there just we're going to go up to the top layer on here and we're just going to tap that and you see we've got the crows there and i can also adjust the opacity of those as and when i can adjust the the blend layers if i like but Basically, I've got that on there now. And if I want to make it smaller, I can reduce the the size of the I can reduce the size of the the birds on there. Now, the thing with this is, if you do want to produce some layers um, to adjust them separately, obviously, if I once I've used the brush, I'm on one layer. So if I wanted to flip it around or I wanted to do some more layers but I wanted some control then I'd just create another layer and just add onto that other layer so if I wanted to to reduce the opacity on those and so on and so forth and then obviously because it's non-destructive I can just delete those layers and there we go and that's how to create a brush now I'm just going to show you another way to do a brush using this image which is not quite as easy as the um, the other layer. And the reason I say that is that because I want to keep some detail in these. And by just pushing up the whiteness and the, and the contrast, I might lose some of the uh, definition in here. Now, I could try. What I would normally do is I would try the Magic Eraser tool on this and see what happens. And it, it's not done a bad job, but you can see it's left a few little bits in here and round here. And it, it can sometimes um, knock out some of the things like the, the branches and the thing. This isn't actually too bad, but what we're going to do is we're going to use a slightly different method to do this. We're still going to use the, the levels adjustment and just bring the brightness up a little bit in the background. Um, and perhaps... That might be OK. Um, we've still got some definition in here. And what we're going to do for this one is we're going to go to the Select and Colour Range option. Now, what this does, and we're going to pick the highlights. Sorry, we're going to pick the highlights because we've got a lot of highlights and we've got some blacks. So the highlight, in, in my view, the best option on his, this is to pick the highlights. So it's going to take the highlights and it's going to try and get rid of all the highlights and leave the, the dark and the mid-range uh, shades in in this image and we can use the fuzziness tool to 
increase or decrease how it selects. And you can see that there's a little bit of a change in that. And the range as well will give us some idea. And you see, we don't want to go too far because it's going to select the background. So we bring it down until we get the, the right one. And when we click OK, it will automatically select all the bits that you've defined in that in that color select um, that range. Now, what we need to do before we delete the background on this is we just need to take off the little lock icon on 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 this layer because we at the moment it's a background layer so we can't do anything on the background so we just need to promote this to a layer and we just click on the little lock, lock icon there and it unlocks the layer and if we now hit the delete key you can see now it's deleted the background and if we go to filter sorry select and deselect we now have all of that those grasses selected and we do the little crop down like we did before and then click OK. And then if we go to edit and define brush set, we now have a brush called grasses. And click OK. And it's now popped that grasses brush down here. And we'll pop that into our folder. And then we now have, if we go onto the layer here, if we click on that, you can see now we've got some grasses in there. And we can change the colour of these if we decide we want to go uh, a brown color we can start to add different colors in so that basically is it how to create brushes and uh, from one of your images thank you bye bye